begin, I like to thank for the invitation, hospitality, love, care, attention, help and support I got. The topic is happiness, peace, harmony. This is what we are trying for, from morning to evening, from evening to morning, for happiness. Happiness. Three syllables, but it has a lot of meaning. First, we have to understand the meaning. Suffering means, in the Buddhist terms, dukkha. Du means hard. Ka means to bear. That which is hard to bear is suffering. Happiness is sukha. Su means easy. Ka means to bear. That which is easy to bear is happiness. From the Buddhist point of view. This mic is better. According to Buddhism, we have to find out the cause and deal with the cause, then the results are there, no more. So we have to find out why are we unhappy and what are the conditions for happiness. There, in Buddhism, there are not only one single reason, there is a main reason, but around it, there are other reasons. The main reason is we mistake pleasures for happiness. Pleasures are not happiness. In the middle of it, just there is a, some kind of good feeling. Like eating an ice cream. In the middle of eating only we get that. After that, if you want that, again you have to go for another ice cream. That is why people are running after pleasure. There is nothing wrong having a good food, going holidays, watching TV, having musical shows, all this. Nothing wrong, but we have to limit ourselves. If you get addicted, then problems more. So, happiness is not like that. Once you achieve it, you might lose it, but you can get it back. In the educational psychology, there is an example given. If you put a monkey into a cage, the monkey is struggling to get out. But there is a button there. First time, without his, the monkey's knowledge, its finger touches the button. The door gets open. Then every time you put the monkey into the gate, it knows how to get out. Happiness comes from within, not without. Outside things are just places. Mainly it comes from generosity, also precepts and meditation. The joy of giving, letting go. Generosity, it letting go your time, letting go your energy, letting go your money in terms of today and letting go um, certain other things. There is a happiness through letting go. That is generosity, guarded by wisdom, expecting any, without expecting no reward whatsoever. That is proper generosity, according to heart and means. Then the precepts. If I kill somebody, I make myself miserable and make others miserable too. If I don't kill, then I will be happy. Ending up, I won't end up in the police, police prison or court. Stealing, you get something, but if you get caught up in the police, then again suffering. So keep in the precepts. If you interfere with other people's families, then you make them miserable and you make yourself miserable. 
If you deceive somebody, deceive or bluff or whatever, it creates misery for around. And I make miserable. Even drinking alcohol and getting drunk and driving, the driver himself is not peaceful. It, he is at the risk of his own life and his others are risk at their own life. No harmonious with others. And also not sensitive, not considerate. So the five precepts, it leads to happiness. Meditation is all leads to happiness. Because if I hold on something, when I take my finger out of it, then it drops. Like the example I told you about the monkey, when you keep on practicing meditation, trying to meditate, your mind is all over. But all of a sudden, there is a button to the happiness. You never know where the button is. For the first time, the mind becomes free. It is from coming from within, by experience. So these are the three steps for happiness. Then peace, harmony also included in that, within that. Now the example is, for a plant to grow, main thing is a good soil. Then it needs manure, water, sunlight and water, and also wind. So in Buddhism, the happiness comes from contentment. What is contentment? Ability to satisfy with what you already have. To manage what is available. That doesn't mean to say you can't make the conditions better, you can. But you, if you forget what you already have, then trying to make conditions better, you will never end up. If I am happy, satisfied with this robe, if I get a better robe, why not? Then I wash it and use it for something else and have that. That is how the happiness comes in Buddhism. Satisfy with what if I have the breakfast, uh, it was not even if I uh, not enough, be happy with it and have a better lunch. So the satisfying with what you already have, if I think the pair of glasses I am wearing is enough for me, then I am happy. If I think this is no, I want a better one, so wanting and running after more and more better ones, it creates your misery. Because you are not satisfying with what you already have. If you are a millionaire, be happy and try to be a billionaire. There is nothing. But based on right livelihood, based on righteousness. But if you have enough money, preferably a bit more to help others, satisfy with that money and try to make your income better so that you can do a lot of welfare work, social welfare, community welfare work, uh, for the welfare and happiness of children. So Buddhism has no limit about earning in the right way. So knowing the income and knowing the draw, uh, uh, expenses balancing. So happiness is what we want, but the, there are a few other reasons, like if I think, if I understand, my body is subject to sickness. At the old age, there is always one sickness or the other. If I understand that, let the body, let the body suffer, let the mind not suffer. Let the body be sick, let the mind not be sick. If you have the right understanding and true knowledge about I'm 
just waiting to finish. No, 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 finish, it's okay. Even if I answer, it's disturbing. So let him understand that I am not going to answer. That's why I waited. <clears throat> so the emotional acceptance of old age, even if I ex uh, accept death is a part of my life, I die unconfused. That fear of death goes away. Fear of being sick. If I fall unwell, if I feel unwell, just go to the doctor and take the medicine and recover. That's all. If I forget something, rather than worrying, how did I forget? And to make sure not to forget it again. That's all we can do. So happiness also, we feel suffering, but understanding, recognizing the suffering itself will make you feel take things easy. So, <coughs> let us practice some meditation and see how. I let you drive. Put to the driving seat and let you drive. I just observe and tell you mistakes so that you can correct. Let us do some meditation and see how. <coughs> Either you relax your arms or hands on the knees or get this like this, the concentration symbol. Close your eyes and make sure your neck is not like this, not like this up. Just bring the balance. Now pay attention to your whole body and notice how the body responds to you. Allow your body to be what it is. Don't try to make it into something. Just let the body be what it is. If you feel like floating, don't try to control it. Let it happen. Now look at your own face from your own mind. Notice the mood you are in right now. Relax your muscles on the face. And come down to the neck area, relax your muscles on your neck. And also relax your shoulders. And if you feel any tense, soften the muscles from your mind. And come down to the arms area and right up to the end of the fingers and notice the tingling sensation and notice the sensations on your hands then come to the chest area and relax the muscles and listen to the heartbeats again go down to the stomach area and notice the rise and fall of your tummy. Then sweep the down from the stomach to the lower areas and also right up to the end of the toes. Now sweep the whole body up and down from head to toes and toes to head. Keep on sweeping from your mind, feeling, observing, relaxing, feel, observing, feeling, experiencing what goes in your mind and the body. Keep going, sweeping the whole body, relaxing. Now think, I am, my body is relaxed. My body is more relaxed. 
my body is completely relaxed. My mind is relaxed. My mind is more relaxed. My mind is completely relaxed. Both then my mind and body are relaxed. They are more relaxed. They are completely relaxed. And stay with the awareness of the body. Now pay attention to your nostrils and watch the ingoing breath and the outcoming breath. Just allow the breath to go in and come out on its own. Relax with the outgoing breath. If you feel tired though, uh, thought of, then energize your body with a couple of ingoing breaths and relax with the outgoing breath and develop a sense of well-being for your own body. May I be well, repeat mentally, may others be well. With an ingoing breath, may I be well. With an outgoing breath, may others be well. And develop a sense of love to your body. And listen to this chanting. Breathing in, breathing out. I am blooming as a flower. I am solid as a mountain. I am firm as the earth. I am free. I am free. I am free. Just enjoy this chanting and keep the watching the breath. Relax your relax with the outgoing breath. Energize your body with a couple of ingoing breaths and then allow the natural breathing. And develop a sense of well being. May I be well. May others be well. May all beings be well. Watch the breath and I let you practice silence in silence. Open your eyes, stretch your legs, relax your hands on the... So that's the end of meditation. So what you experience is, or you can't put the experience into words, there is a limit. This is experiential knowledge. Not thinking, just experiencing the changingness of the body. Once you experience the changingness, your mind is at ease. Because we are trying to keep things without changing. We struggle to maintain things, but the things change, everything changes, except changingness. Changingness is permanent, but everything else is changing, changing, changing. By experiencing this, you, there is a kind of happiness at ease, peace, everything. If a water in a pool is moving because of the 
wind when the wind slows down the waves it goes back to its water form original water when mind is agitated excited emotional overwhelmed by emotion you can't see the bottom within the pool because the water is shaking moving you see the reflection on the sun uh, sky that's all so we have to calm down through meditation and then only when the wind slow down the waves go back the mud goes down and you can see through the water the bottom this is like that we have to practice a little bit of meditation every 3 minute 3 minutes a day 3 minutes in the before you go to bed is very hard to enjoy at the beginning because the nearby the coast the waves are very strong and you are pushed away so in the first practicing your minds are all over but slowly the wind slows down then the waves go back to the original water then the water becomes still and then the mud goes down and you see the bottom within then your mind can see look at things as they truly are not as they appear to be these are the practical ways of being happy there are other things also i have a story this is uh, something from the text not the original buddhist text but they have a commentaries there was a family very rich family having a big house out just next to the house in a small garden there was a hut and a beggar and his wife they go for begging beg some a little bit of money come home cook and in eat and have a drum a small drum they put the drum and sing and sleep the next day though so they are very happy couple the millionaire is far too busy with making money the wife is complaining what is this life you don't have five minutes to talk to what is this life look at those beggar they just go in the morning and come back have something to eat then they sing and they sleep very well what is this life we have a big house big money where is happiness this husband thought okay let me teach her something she put he put he throw away 99 rupees or dollars or ringgits and kept quiet this beggar and his wife saw this 99 ringgits they were very happy let us make this 100 and they made it 100 when it came to 100 let us make is 120 25 and they kept on making it then they want to do it 200 so the singing everything the simple life they lost the husband now you were talking about a family very nice very um, singing and very happy what happened to them yeah, that is why i enjoy their music oh dear what happened i don't know you know i put 99 ringgits now they are going to they were trying to make it 100 after making it 100 they wanted to make it 110 and 150 and 200 so they lost their happiness when you go to earn a lot of money the life is so so i don't have time for you that is the lesson so money is not everything we need it to a certain extent 
just for your good health, just for you to be healthy, and you have to pay your medical bills, pay the pay your doctor, and pay for uh, mortgage and lot of the you need money. But today the prices are too high, very hard to do it. Then we suffer. But uh, what I can do is, I simplify my life, cut down my extra expenses, and live a simple life. Then only I can achieve happiness. But there are a lot of things: generosity, meditation, meditation, sharing and caring, a community gathering. We need a community. If you have certain skills and education, you can offer it to the community. Something then you are happy partly. So parts be becomes a whole. The parts benefits the whole benefit. Whole benefit the part ben parts benefit. So there are few conditions. You make the conditions. You are happy. Then you give. It affects your community, and community is also happy. This is the secret of Buddhist practice of happiness. Wanting and not wanting both are suffering. But I want something. I go for it. I get it. Okay. I go for something. Try. So I want something. It doesn't come. Then suffering. I don't want something. Something. It comes to me again. I, then I am suffering. So accepting as things are. There are certain things are easily come to my life. There are certain things. The more I hunt, it gets far, far away. So we have to understand the difference between needs and wants. Needs are must. So try to live with the basic needs, and cut down extra wants. Wants are desires. Desires are must. So limit according to the. Now in this hot climate, we need a sunglass and also some cotton clothes. But this time the England is much more cold in February. Now it's a little bit less. January very cold. So socks, hats, scarf, gloves, everything. So we need the basic comfort. Try to simplify. Live with the basic simple life. Then the happiness comes. I had a different shoes. I got a better one, so I use it for other purposes. So I am happy with this. If I get a better one, why not? It's like that. But uh, you can't use the wedding dress for the funeral. You have to. You have to. So, if you have the wedding dress to the funeral or the funeral dress to the wedding, it cannot work. So, you have to dress according to your position. If you are an executive director, you have to maintain your position. This, uh, this is a uh, is important. If I go to airport, it's an international place. I should be pleasant. I should have a better dress, better robe. I should maintain my respect, and all these lot of conditions come together. It makes a, a one letter becomes if you one letter, then it becomes a word. A few words become a sentence. Few sentence become a paragraph. A paragraph become a chapter. Few chapters a book. A lot of books a library. So there are things we have to. Maintain wife and children. There are a lot of things, duties, responsibilities, commitments, and we have to in the middle. So we should be in the world, but not of the world. We have to be in the world, but we should not be of the world. So we should have, but not lot of attachment. We should attach to our principles. Attached to our earnings and be careful, the spending. All these things are necessary for happiness. But the monks have happiness in a different way. Lay people have happiness in another different way. 
So the lay life, there are four types of happiness. One is to be someone who is who has enough or preferably more. If I have enough for myself, I don't depend on others. I don't ask, I don't demand, I don't trouble people. The little I have, I should be able to manage. If there is a well nearby a river, when you take water, it fills up then and there. But if there is a limited, a well limited fountains, then you have to use the water carefully like that. It depends on your income. It's also partly happiness. Now poor, it has the eastern meaning. Duk pat. Duk means suffering. Pat means stricken. So someone is stricken by suffering without money, then suffering. Po rich. Poho sat. Po means much. Sat means has. He who has much, then he is a rich person. So the Eastern meaning. Sang tutti. Tutti means satisfying. Sang means self. Self-satisfaction. Self-sufficiency. Even using the right amount of food, right amount of sleep, right amount of rest, right amount of work, so what is the problem today for unhappiness? Stress. Can't cope with the time, work and the money. No balance. Very hard to bring. Very hard. Easy thing than doing. A lot of on the plate. So simplifying. Majjima Patipada, knowing the right amount. This is the secret. But we have the desire mind and the reflective mind. The birds, animals, they just follow their impulses. But the human beings are also have the desires, but through the reflective mind, you can simplify. If I am the first in the row of the eating, I should be sensitive to others. If I want something, three helps, but I should be careful without depriving others. I should take what is enough. From the amount, I should measure up what I can and what I want. But if it is, if it is not a finished bag, then you can take some more. So these are the secrets. Sensitivity, consideration, especially monks have different rules about food, women and money. Women, not wise women, unwise women creates problem for monks. Food is also creating a lot of problems. Money is also creating a lot of problems for monks. So knowing the right amount, knowing the boundaries, even lay people have boundaries. Within staying within the limitation, staying with limits of your rights, limits of your position, and not abusing, not bumbling. Those are the things for happiness when we live in this world. I have another story. Once upon a time, the king of the country wanted to build up the, uh, the best and the most beautiful house. He thought, before I build this up, I want to know where are the best and the most beautiful house in the country. He sent a messenger. The messenger was going and on the way he met a man with the torn clothes and not quite looking very happy. Here this man asked, 
I am a messenger of the king. The king wants to build up the more best and the most beautiful house in the country. So he is looking for where it is. Can you tell me? Yes. It is where there is freedom, he said, because he just got out of the prison. Then he went further and he met a man with a sword and very fierce looking, sad. He had the same question from this man and told the same thing and, oh, it is where there is peace. Because he just finished her woo and came back. Then there was a beautiful girl having beautiful flowers on the hair with a beautiful dress, plucking flowers. She approached and said, I am looking for the best and the most beautiful house for the king. Can you tell me? It is where there is love. It's because she is getting married next day. Then he went a monk. He asked the monk, Oh, it is where there is a simple life and a real light livelihood. So whatever your house is, if you have these four, that's the heaven, that's the happy life. Freedom is the right freedom. Ability to use your time and space to do your own things in the right way. Because people do the right thing in the wrong way, sometimes do the wrong thing in the right way. So freedom is time and space to do the right thing and the good thing in the way you want. That is freedom. Peace is quiet environment, not many people, not halabalu, not the busy street, then it helps you to have peaceful. That is one part only, but it is within myself. But it is important to be have a quiet area. Like when you learn to drive, you choose these lonely road where there are no vehicles. You will go to the busy street later. So when you practice meditation, calm, you need a calm, quiet, less populated, less busy places. Love, according to Buddhism, sharing and caring. Today I am sharing with you and you are sharing with me too. That is love in the Buddhist sense. If I care for someone, if I share what I have with others, I am a happy person and know so that is the best house according to heart and means like I said earlier. Then the monks, he said, simple life. What is simple? Knowing the right amount of what you need. Sleep, food, rest, work. That is simple. Plain living and high thinking. That doesn't mean to say in this hot weather you should have air condition. Even in the car, I can't come without air condition. But in Sri Lanka, in the hot areas, there is a mango tree it is during the day after the meal, I put a seat and much better than air condition. I lived in a cave during the hot season, is much better than air condition. When it rains, the cave is, much, is very warm. But we can't go to that one because of this, the way of living. But from time to time, you find when I go to Sri Lanka, there is a tree called very. It's a there is a well, and these are very cool trees. The cold is very cooling water. I go to take a shower, 
and I sit under a tree, much better than your condition. But we can't go to it 24 hours. We have to live with the air condition. We during the winter, we have to have the heating warm, but balance. Take what can be taken from the past and mix it with the. Now, if you go to a top of a hill, how long can you be there? You have to come back to the plane. You can stay and enjoy for a couple on the top of the hill. So, like that, go for a retreat from time to time for meditation. Live with the basic. So, when I go to a retreat, because I'm a monk, my food is just on the table. I help myself, but somebody will cook for me. But you have to manage your food because you are a lay person. Then toilet, shower, washing my clothes, shaving my hair and beard. Just minimize your needs to a couple of days and stay and come back and plug into the busy roads, plug into the busy life. This is how we should be happy in this life at this time of modern technology, so much stress and things like that. So simplify. How do you simplify? If I have the keys to my car, I feel like driving. When I feel like driving, I should stop and is it urgent? It is necessary? Is this the right time to drive? Oh, the person might come here in a couple of times, hours, and also I can do it by email. When you feel like doing something, you come to a simple way, save your money, save your time, save your energy. But it needs a bit of a time. And how do you find uh, time for meditation? Prioritizing. Now, before I go to bed, tomorrow I am flying back. So, this afternoon, I have to prioritize my work. Put the passport, ticket, and a little bit of money. That is the first thing I should put into my bag. Then my mobile phone, charger, then the basic needs like shavers, things like that. And bring them to one place, keep them, collect them in one place, everything, and then pack, you won't forget anything. If you keep last minute, then you will forget something. One day, Sri Lankan monk went to the airport, the passport was on the table. Then he telephoned and got someone to drive back to the airport. So avoid forgetfulness by being remembering. These are the little, little things. Yesterday, I asked a question from the audience. But nobody gave the answer. But one gave the answer. I said, if you want to go home, what is the first thing you should do? Somebody said, I should drive. I said, the answer is all right, but not the right answer. If I want to go to the central temple, I should get up from this seat. This is the first thing I should do. Then keep the microphone. Go and pick up my shoes. Open the door of the car. Seat, put seat belt. This is how the happiness we have to work out. What is the most important thing I can? Then you will find a lot of time. If you just go with the flow of how you, without any planning, you will waste a lot of time. Yeah. We are human beings, we chat. Doesn't matter. I was chatting with the gentleman who drove me. But if he is a careful person, uh, if I, then he was talking to me and I... Uh, because if he felt this is not the safe driving, if he stopped, then I will be sensitive. But chatting is also part of, not gossiping. Gossiping it doesn't help you. So happiness, there are three speakers in this world. Gutabani, rubbish speakers. Nonsense. It doesn't bring any good. So don't be a rubbish speaker. 
then second speaker is better flower speakers flowers are beautiful also nice smelling you talk something nicely politely pleasantly and also something meaningful then you are a better person happy person a honey speakers even one single drop of honey put into the tongue very tasty so people la honey speak that means those who speak a couple of words but lot of meaning so be a flowers either flower speaker or a honey speaker that brings your life more happiness how do you uh, avoid gossip i know one person when he comes to the te temple goes to the kitchen and see if there is any unwashed things and remove the rubbish if there is nothing to do just go to the library take a book and read nobody comes to talk to him but if you stay idle without doing anything people will come and start gossiping asking questions unnecessary questions personal details i got a telephone call i don't answer the phone it's my england phone it's a big bill i got the number and send a text message out of the country and will return on the 31st of march then this person called me vibe free fall bante me are you i am out of the country where is the country i said all countries outside united kingdom is abroad then he knew why don't you tell me where you are sometimes you know people sometimes they keep on telling other people bante is there bande i will have trouble so it is my responsibility i said out of the country return on the 31st of march to uk give the right answer if i tell i am in malaysia then call back and uh, what part of malaysia whom are you with which temple oh, so many details so i avoid the rubbish speakers but uh, i have some nex of kin and something like that for my gp and all that he calls i say i am all right uh, you know this virus when i went to malacca the monk had a very good herbal drink and he gave it to me i drank it again in penang a monk got some herbal drink herbal is a powder and i drank it so i am surviving still rather than worrying about oh uh, just if you get a chance to drink some herbal tea why not like that this is how you is like our lives uh, are is just like a boat without a driver it can't be like that the boat should have a driver and then only you can go to the other show other end of the river our lives are like a ship in the middle of the sea all of a sudden it can go and hit in a big rock or it can be destroyed by the cyclone so we have lot of problems we should be careful mindful and then our lives are secure we will reach our destination so prioritizing your work how do you prioritize equal priority sometimes you have to let go one anyway because you can't have two equal priorities at the same time no but when what i do is when i have an appointment with the doctor i go to it on my way back if i have letters go to the post office buy stamps and postage then if i have to withdraw some money from the bank because the government pays my pension so if i i want take the whole lot when depending on and then there is there is something left all this then if i want to have because i do well some bread or milk or something uh, so you plan that's all and no so how do you avoid forgetfulness either you write it in a paper or tell from your upper mind to the inner mind after this medical appointment let me remember 
to go to the post. It comes to your mind immediately after the appointment. The inner mind will tell you, "Oh, you have to go to the post office." How do? That's how you avoid your forgetfulness. If you something is uh, forgetting, then you write a note so that. So in a in your working table, have a piece of paper with a diary. Uh, I have to call this person. I had a I because my airport there someone is driving. I told him okay come. I go and send a reminder. By so I cut up the paper. Now this is time to call this person. I said so just to remind you, the hire to airport coming to pick me up by six o'clock. So you have to organize certain things. So to be happy and successful, you need four things: organizing, coordination, cooperation, and communication. All these things are necessary to be happier in this life. If you lose one of them, you you can't achieve what you want. So understand. Organ now we organize this. Then we coordinated everything: video camera, transport, and bantis were drinks, rest, food, lunch, everything. Coordination, shared meal, then cooperation, helping each other. Communication. I got a message from my uh, Miss Madam Julie. Who organized this? Bante, somebody will come to you, eight fifteen to pick you up and take you to the center. That is called right communication. So I was ready. I just came down and stayed. Eight ten, I came down and waited. It was a little bit five minutes late, but the person came and said, "Very well, Asli, we are going now." Then he wanted to come. With me because he is taking care of me. He likes me as an elderly monk. He is very supportive. Now the steps has nothing to hang on to. Then holding my hand and lot of supports. So these are the little little things we need to be successful, happy, and prosperous in life. Now I come to the human relations. Very brief. All of us are different from one another. Even the two daughters of the same mother, two sons of the same father and mother, they are different. How do we keep good, maintain good rela human relation? Secret is respecting the difference. I am a monk, but I am a man. But he is a gentleman. He is also a man, but we are different again. So respecting the difference, allow him to be what it is. Allow her to be, allow her to be what she is. Uh, Achan Cha, a Thai meditation master, had two foreign monks. One goes and complains about the other. Other, the other one goes and complains about. It. They, he called both of them, and said, "You are not what he is." He is. He is not what you are. That's all. Say we respect the difference. Then the difference, age difference, uh, religious religious difference. We respect this. This is the first secret. And not demanding and influencing too much. And habits. I should recognize how my habits affect the other person. But I know how others. Habits affect me, but I have to be aware how my habits affects each other. The habit there's a clash between habits: women's habit, men's habit, monks' habit, children's habits, foreigners' habits. So we have to respect. This is the secret of human and duties. Duties of one person are the rights of another. We do our duties, and then we get the rights. Rather than fighting for rights, let us do our duties. This is the relationship, human relations. Not interfering with the other people's too much. 
allow them their privacy. Those are the little, little secrets. But if it is urgent, now if I ask, uh, keep on asking, 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 allowing the other people, giving, no other, uh, giving other people no space and time, they won't like me. Problems means, what I do, the other person doesn't like. I don't like what the other person does. Husband and wife, husband doesn't like what the wife does, the wife does, doesn't like the husband does. So we both have to find out the likes and dislikes, and never dislike, and do the likes. Easy saying than doing it, not 100 percent. A relationship is human, not perfectly perfect, but bring it to 80 percent good than the because if the, this cup is uh, half full then forget about the other half and happy be with the so happy be look at the world how much the glass is fill full and forget about the gap if you can fill up the gap that's fine but rather than uh, looking at the what is available in the glass, the water, amount of water the uh, glass uh, has without looking at the gap and trying to fill it up. This is the secret of human relation. There are certain things we can't change in other people. There are certain things others can't change. There is a limit I can change for another person. There is a limit a woman has a limit to change for the husband. It goes the other way around. So there is a limit we can change for the other person. Just do your best. Then the other person also should be understanding. This is the human relations. So we have come to 10.30. <clears throat> so this is the time for questions and answers. At the end of the question, we will do the sharing and aspiration and transfer means you can ask any question then, but I can't promise I can answer all of them. I keep my rights. I do my duties, but keep the rights as well. Any questions? I pass the mic around. Good morning, Bhante. Yeah. Um, you talk about uh, water being still and being affected by the environment, like the wind and um, a boat coming past and all, then the water will, will wave. So I'm trying to understand, what if we ourselves have done our part? We keep our precepts, we don't lie, we try our best to care for other people, but at the end of the day, it's other people that is doing harm to us, like lying to us, stealing from us, taking advantage of our kindness, or um, you know, keep pushing us. You know, even though, like you said, we have limits, right? How much we can tolerate, how much we can change. So how do we actually um, deal with that? You know, someone else keeps coming to affect us. Yeah. And how do we respond, yeah. especially if it's, um, it's, it's not somebody where we can just ignore and walk away, you know. <laughs> it's like family um, members yeah. and whatnot. I got your question. One thing is, other people try to deceive us. It's my responsibility not to be caught up. People try to cheat us, but let me have the wisdom not to be deceived. If someone comes and tells about another person to me, while listening, I should look and see why this person is telling about that person. Is he angry with him or weird? Then I can get the proper feeling rather than just listening and believing. Why this person is telling about? What is the clash between these two? 
what does he want what does he expect by telling about that person from me so you have to figure out then you will be safe rather than listening fully and believing and also there are a lot of other things uh, uh, <laughs> there is a story <clears throat> very short one day a snake came to the temple the monk was preaching be kind don't get angry be patient try to practice love the snake was oh what a word of wisdom he went to the monk and said i want to practice this can i stay in the temple yes now the um, uh, snake is practicing without getting angry may all beings be well and happy and blah 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 but nobody comes to the snake the snake felt very sorry people are afraid of the snake then he went to the monk and said look i am practicing loving kind of but nobody comes to me oh then you shut up your mouth and stay still everything will be okay he practiced it then it came to a point where children come and he team is the stick the ladies use the snake to uh, as a rope to tie up the firewood bundle of firewood and one full moon day lot of children hit the snake and the heat was fired up to five fire bundles of firewood by ladies the snake was crying the head monk saw the what is wrong you know you practice me to the, you ask me to do this now these children they are pitying me and all kinds of things and ladies he the the snake was crying oh then when they come to do that you open your mouth and just then everything will be okay so when we live in the society you have to show that you are angry at least you have to show even if you are not angry you show a sour face angry face otherwise you can't live in the society you have to be like the snake sometimes not always and everywhere you have to handle the person and say see uh, sometimes i get telephone calls do the business calls i listen a little bit and say i am sorry i am not interested that's all you say if you do this blah 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 business calls i listen to you sorry sir i am not interested sorry guy keep the phone put the phone back you escape diplomatic tactfulness so you have to find your find different ways according to the situation i can't say you have to do, do like this do like this you have to understand figure out the situation know the situation do what is what you can do Uh, this is how we handle and you limit your friends try to have good friends keep the bad friend from the arms length you don't be angry with them if you meet them hello how are you and by blah 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 but i am sorry i am i have to rush back to my appointment i don't have much time sorry maybe some other time and you escape now sometimes I live in a flat. There are certain nasty sort of black boys. He come and say, "Can I have twenty p?" I just keep a little bit five, then give it. I let go that twenty p pence and save my life. If I don't give that, he will attack me, and I will have more problem. Depends on the situation. i have to have the sense of who is this person what is to do and all that it's a very hard to explain this is how and you can't conduct this specific and things like that handle the situation it's like that there are a lot of bad people you keep them arms length because if you make them angry is again problems diplomatically there was a monk who went to Hamel Hempstead Town, a Christian gentleman, but he knows about Buddhist monks. He went for alms round to collect food. This gentleman came and gave him, bought him some food and gave it to him. The, he is very sharp, and he said, "You know, I have seen God, and I have known God. 
Now he wants to get this monk into an argument. There is no gold and blood. The monk said diplomatically, I am very happy at least there is one person who has seen the God and known the God. So now I can tell, if you give me your telephone number or email address, I can tell others, oh, there is a person who has seen the God and known the God, please contact this person. He couldn't come back to his argument. There is another story, there were two foxes. One is a very naughty, always fighting. Another um, fox, very quiet, looking uh, after his. One day, all the other fox went away. This naughty fox came to the other fox and this lonely, sort of very quiet. Oh, I feel a little lonely. Hello. Shall we go and play? You know, I am looking after him. Oh, please go and help. Uh, you um, uh, play yourself. Huh? How can... Uh, how come there? We need two people to play. Are you coming? Will you come? Come, will you? Oh, okay, okay, let us go. Then he came to a ground and nothing to play. This naughty little naughty fox broke a branch and cut them in, cut into another piece and gave it to the other fox and say, this is mine. Then, usually, if it was yours, why did you give it to me and ask me again? Pointless. But this fox said, is this really yours? Yes. Okay, have it. That is how you handle people without getting into arguments, debates. If somebody say, I believe God, I am, I don't believe Buddhism, I am a Christian, I should say, thank you for believing God and also thank you for not believing Buddhism. How can he argue? These are diplomatic answers. Sometimes even if you know this person, you, oh yes, 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 you are 100% right. <laughs> Rather than going to argument, if he is very conditioned and very strict, okay, yes, that's true, that's true. Then the person is happy and never fight. This is a bit of instructions. Okay, thank you. Bhante, just now you mentioned uh, problems giving, uh, three things giving problems to monks, food, women and uh, Money. Can you please elaborate so that we can help the no, to keep there peace are, for monks? Because there are rules about food. Uh, rules about food. So, if people just bring food and ask me to eat at the wrong time, then if I eat, I will have problems. Now there are rules, uh, women to not to sit parallel, but in the car if a woman lady drives, if there is no one, if there are a lot of ladies for the back seat, I just sit mindfully because there are other ladies, we can't manage the situation, there are exceptional places like that. Money, monks are not supposed to ask anything unless he is sick or uh, uh, unless he is a relative or mother and father, things like that. So, I can ask some money from my mom and dad, some my brothers and sisters and relations. Apart from that, if someone is too faithful, then I can. But otherwise, uh, so, create a lot of problems. But if I go to the, uh, we don't allow the ladies to touch our hands, avoid lustful feelings, this is the main thing. Then if I am sick on the hospital, in the hospital, I have, if there are no male nurses, I have to allow the female nurses to touch, uh, do my blood pressure. But there are, so the money, women uh, and food, all these three things can create problems for the monk. Now I am a diabetic. I always carry a piece of chocolate, a little bit of water, in travels, 
just in case my sugar levels go down, just a piece of chocolate, things like that. There are exceptional allowables, but you have to follow the rules. If you follow the rules, rules are protection. So the Buddha gave, made rules about these three things. Because sometimes I carry a little bit of money. Uh, one day I was traveling, I wanted a cool drink. But I, I don't know whether he has money or not. Sometimes people don't have money but the card. So I keep a little bit, five, ten. So can you buy a drink? Here is the money. If he really doesn't uh, have money, okay, I will look after that. Or, but I, it is my way I should give the expenses. It's like that, uh, follow the rules. There are exceptional cases where you can't practice the rules. Then if there is a good reason you can't practice, then just is for only that situation. Like, we, because I had the operation, uh, heart operation, a uh, female nurse can feed me, put the food into the mouth. So there are exceptional cases where the rules don't apply. Otherwise keep to the rules. It's safety and avoid problems. The, what are the rules on the road to avoid accidents and injuries? To everyone uh, free from accidents and to go deaf go to the destination safely, quickly and carefully. That is what the rules, traffic lights, everything are there. If you cross the road at the wrong place, accidents, ambulance, police. Now even dogs are trained to take the blind people, the dogs at the red light. The, so we have to be mindful about rules. If you forget, then if you forget, that's fine. There's excuse, exceptional cases. Those days monks went in the ship to the other countries. Uh, there are situations where you can't uh, practice your rules. You have to adapt. Even in the aeroplane, sometimes if you have a long flight, like I was flying from New Zealand to England, the flight itself via Singapore and Melbourne, it was nearly 21 hours, the whole duration of the flight. I have to eat, I can't practice my rules. So that is why this explanation. Not always and everywhere. A monk has a discipline, not a rule, to sit and eat, not standing eating. But if there are places where I can't have no seat, I have to stand and eat in travelling. Also a drink uh, without sitting, standing. It's a, it's a little, a monk uh, running uh, is not very nice to look. Also eating like lay people, walking, walking, sitting, uh, those are not nice etiquettes. So we have certain things, international case. Now if there is a foreigner, if he I speak our language, he might mean just and we are talking about him. So best thing is to use the English. So there is like that, there are situations where I should be mindful. Because if he speak half a in our language, he might think, oh, he is some, they are talking something nasty about me or something like that. If the words are similar to his language, definitely it will mislead to certain misunderstanding. So like that. The rules are rules. They, have, they are intended to avoid something also and to achieve something. Like a bridge with a fence. The fence avoid you falling into the river and getting drowned and killed. And also, uh, you have to go to the other end and safely you can hold on to something. There is a fence and things like that. The rules are like a fence and the bridge to cross over. Since uh, you, uh, you, you teach um, uh, Sanskrit, yeah. out of interest I would like to find out what are the similarities and differences between Pali and Sanskrit. Um, yeah. Would the grammar be uh, similar? And the second thing is that, um, of course, in the first Buddhist council, 
which is held at the Satapani case in Rajkir, uh, the language that they could have used was Magadi. And that was the, uh, when, the, uh, when uh, Arhan Mahinda brought down the, uh, the teachings to Sri Lanka, um, uh, it became the Pali language. But there was also another, um, you know, the Buddhism also moved up to Kashmir, and later on the scriptures were written in Sanskrit. What are the circumstances that has, uh, you know, uh, made um, the monks in the northern part of India to record uh, the, uh, the scriptures in Sanskrit, although in the first Buddhist council, I think the language they use would be Magadi, which is very close to Pali. What is the circumstances that has actually influenced the monks to have recorded in Sanskrit, and which later on, the, you know, in the northern the Buddhist tradition, the scriptures are, are basically Sanskrit? The Pali and Sanskrit are two languages. Sounds are different. Sanskrit, Sanskrit has strong sounds and Pali have soft sounds. And also grammar-wise different, uh, singular and plural in Pali, but in Sanskrit double. Now I go, two of us go and we go. In Sanskrit, we have three. In, English, in Pali, ahangachami, I go, mayangachami, only singular and plural. So Sanskrit was a language used for only religious purposes. It was not a, it was a very classic sort of language. And when Venerable uh, at the Second Council, there was a split and they used the Magadi. The Pali means those days the name was Magadi. Now the Magadi name disappeared then word uh, it was renamed Pali. So Pali means a Buddhist language, original text of Buddhism. But Magadi was also, also a very powerful language. When the Buddha spoke that there is Shuddha Magadi and Ardha Magadi. Shuddha Magadi means like pure Hindi and mixed Hindi. So the Buddha used the pure Magadi, the pure Mm, like pure Hindi. And Buddha went to the locals, he changed the words according to locality. Now, we say, but the uh, rice bath, that is northern India. But when we come to Bombay, it says Chawul or something. So during the days of the Buddha, Buddha used the Magadhi, pure Magadhi language, but when he went to different places, he changed certain words. And Venerable Mahama, in the eyes, because I was not there, so I don't know exactly. The, according to the critics, they say the language of Sri Lankan language and the Pali language, um, the, where the Venerable Sanchi, the local language were very similar, like Spanish and Italian. When someone speaks Italian, the Spanish person understands. They both speak the two different languages, but still they understand like Danish and Swedish, Denmark and Sweden. They both speak the two languages, they understand each other. <laughs> so when Ruel Mahamayinda came, he used either their language, which is similar to ours, or he, like when we come to um, Malaysia, if there is no English, I have to learn Malay. Aba Kaba, Mana Pargi, Terima Kasi, like that. Uh, you know, I have to study. Venerable Mahamind might have learned Sinhalese. Then he preached. But if I come to Ma uh, uh, Mal uh, Malaysia and preach in Mandarin, a lot of people will come here. Because it's a layer language. So this is the uh, sort of uh, uh, answers to your question. These are the answers. Anything more? If you want a bit more explanation, you are very welcome. And we, I will stay 11.20 to do the transference of merits and uh, chant the verses of sharing and aspiration. But you have a lot of time. Today we start 9.15 or 9.30. Now it's almost 10.30. It's, now this is 10.40. So it's still time for questions. Uh, um, uh, Bante. Yeah. Um, just now you started, uh, we, we did a meditation, you know, when you took us through 
You walk us through how the, the guided meditation. Uh, it, it's I find it very simple, and it's easy to do. Is that good enough for a lay person, um, in the practice, or is there is there a need for us to to go on to a higher level kind of thing? Which I am mm-hmm. not too sure. Thank you. First. Um, there are few subjects, 40 subjects of meditation according to different mental levels. But you choose a three or two, or then you practice and check experientially what works you best. Then go for that. But usually, anapanasati, the in and out breathing, is the only meditation that helps to go to higher levels of confrontation. Because there are other meditations, you can go to the uh, third jhana, the absorption, and from there you have to, it's one way system. Now you can have access to highways in so many roads, but when you come to the motorway, it's one way. Like that, uh, you can practice anapanasati, mitta bhavana, buddha nusati, the recollection of the Buddha, and things like that. And then you have to find out which works you best. But still, when you come to the fourth, uh, third jhana, from there it is one way system. You have to go to the equanimity. You let go happiness, you let go uh, joy, happiness, and then go to the equanimity. From there is one way. Uh, it's a self-experience. If you want to understand it, uh, second or the first discourse of Diganikaya, the long discourses, Samanya uh, Palasutta, there are vivid descriptions about jhanas and how to go about them. I have a bit, uh, I heard a little bit from one monk. Now the first jhana is like pendulum. Pendulum. Then like a bird flying to the air, swapping his wings and then without swapping the uh, wings, he just go like the space without shaking, without doing the wings. But he needs the wings to fly to the air. So when you come to the subject of meditation, you need that. And then you go like very smoothly. Like a plane in takeoff and with the seat belts, passengers, then you go to the top of the air, you remove it, it lies like this, like that. Then, when you come to the second jhana, but it was like this, the pendulum, but it slows down. Then when it comes to the third one, like this, shaking a little bit, the mind. When it comes to the fourth jhana, it's like steady finger, no moving. That's where you can divert to vipassana or go to the supreme knowledges of reading other people's mind, uh, looking and tracing the uh, uh, rise, uh, uh, birth and deaths of beings and divine eye and all that. Just to give you a glimpse of how it is. But you should go from step to step, step. Now when you drive from the neutral to the first gear, then a little second gear, then third gear, fourth gear. But in the jhanas, you go to the first jhana. If you go to the second jhana, and if you want to third jhana, you have to come to the first and then go. Then if you want to go to the fourth jhana, if you are in the third jhana, come back to the first and then go. That's how the practical aspects work. But this is like, talking about water while we are on the ground. We have to jump into the water and water experience and learn how to stand in deep water. Janasa also, it is like that. You jump into the water and struggle, then you learn to stay without getting drowned in the deep water. 
nobody can teach you but i can teach you like teaching by how to ride bicycle by post someone write to me and say i want to learn how to ride bicycle then i write to him please take a bicycle and go to a top of a hill and lean it to the tree climb it and hold on to the branch once you are ready uh, pedals everything holding the handle you release your hand it will come down very fast and fall get injured and do it again cannot work cannot learn bicycles like that <laughs> it's a little bit <laughs> funny example <laughs> It's a different way dri learning driving. Yes, in cricket, sometimes the other people, those who look at you, say he should have hit that way. He should have this way. But the player does his best according to the situation. Those who see, he can say he should have done this way. He should have done that way. He shouldn't have the, shouldn't have that way. He should be that way. Blah 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 blah. But when the balls come, the player. does his best if he listen to the instructor he has to make his own decision about things so in the meditation there are a lot of things you have to make your own decision but there is a teacher to guide you still you have to practice on your own the person goes to the jhanas all these status without the knowledge first time I think lot of people were the guest monk at Amravati, so lot of lay people. Oh, so one person he said, "I don't, I don't feel my body because the body body becomes weightless. His body is there, but in the practice, automatically, he his body became weightless. It happens, but we have to convince the person. Then I had uh, breathing difficulty in the meditation." Uh, the head uh, the mission master said you should go to the doctor i went to the doctor and said nothing wrong i came back and said the doctor didn't say anything. okay um, you pay attention to the chest area and melt pay attention to the tight areas and soften mentally because i had been suppressing certain emotions but he picked it up i didn't pick it up if you have fever or flu uh, then you can take a paracetamol oil or panadol or headache or whatever but if it keeps on going persisting then you have to go to the doctor so some of the meditation you can practice a little bit daily but if you want to keep going then you have to do it under a meditation teacher i did under meditation teachers because i had problems i went through a lot the first 20 minutes is Oh, my mind was crying for the bell. <laughs> It's always like that. And also, uh, once you are practicing in the middle of the meditation, there is a first step. There is a you don't uh, you want to worry about the second step, and be curious about it. but when you climb up when you put the left leg the third left uh, right leg and the uh, left leg will automatically slowly go to the third one rather than imagining but mindfully lifting bringing placing in the walking meditation you can do it formally until you get the training then just walking do it slowly first and then while you are walking your my we walk from the head not from the legs we have to train to work walk from the legs because we walk from head that is why you slip and knock our nails and lot of things happen fall so practice mindfulness living in the present moment paying attention to what you are doing right now are the important things in meditation like i said if i want to go home i should get up from the seat that's the first thing i should do rather than dreaming about the house 
people drive but still dreaming by uh, your driving because when you master your driving the leg comes from accelerator they when you see something ahead automatically the legs come from the accelerator to the brake and you come to a lower gear through the practice sharp brake uh, first do harsh braking then you come to the practice of progressive braking it comes through practice even meditation it comes through your own practice but there are guidance thank you very much you want to yeah uh, um i just um like to understand when you mentioned earlier about a flowery speaker and a honey speaker uh, you mentioned about what a speaker hi ah, yeah, yeah yeah a flowery speaker and a honey speaker yeah can you elaborate the difference between yeah. this flowery uh, and honey flower uh, flowers are beautiful and nice smelling what you speak should be very soft pleasant words at the same time it should be meaningful the other listener can learn something to make his life better it can be an advice or reminder and uh, like that then the flower speaker honey even very one single drop is very sweet so even just a couple of words very very pleasant but has a lot of meaning so many things to learn has a lot of weight in the meaning and there are a lot of uh, like in a blood there are so many minor 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 uh, parts in a blood drop of blood in medical science so if you analyze those words you will learn a lot but it is your wisdom not the speaker's wisdom the speaker said very little but like venerable sariputta was a very intuitive person when he met venerable asaji not me i have only the name the buddha's the arahant great he just a couple of words but he understood it much much in details so some people when they speak the listener has a better uh, knowledge to understand what is behind it and all that that is what the honey speakers like so there are four intellectual levels according to the speaking level udgati tagna that means the somebody says very little but he understands is in details very much what is he telling what is behind this and all that vipatitagna then uh, he needs a little bit of explanation of something he needs very little a bit more explanation like you requested vipatitagna nyay describe in example stories a full detail nyaya cannot understand even the word no idea about the words so it depends on the listeners and also the speakers the speaker tells something very briefly very mindfully but the listener should have developed his wisdom to understand it more and more what is tall through uh, understanding what is not known through what is known um uh, and rubbish is we don't keep the rubbish in the kitchen it smells so when people speak sometimes very very boring you don't want to listen but you put up with it and oh it's very nice to hear that oh you just escape the situation because can't keep on listening all the rubbish this person that person one thing and another is a headache the rubbish speaker 
they are here, the best, uh, they are the worst of all, worst of them. Okay, thank you. My notes is running, so I, I had some tissues. I have some tissues, but it's closed, so I have to open the seat and get. Yes, anything? Yes? Do you have anything? Uh, I have some questions on meditation. So, like you rightfully said, when we start, first start meditating, the mind is like a monkey, keeps jumping and all. So, how do we actually uh, try to steal our mind when all the thoughts come rushing? Uh, try to calm ourselves down and steal the mind, make, make it calm down, um, because the, all the thoughts come rushing. So, do we just ignore them? Do we just um, recognize that they are there? And at, at which point now do we actually move on? And you read that sutta and try to, there are five ways of handling the thoughts in the meditation. One is Forgetting and ignoring. No, no. Shift into the from negativity to positive. There are five ways of handling to disturbing thoughts. First is to shift from negativity to the to the positivity. If I there is someone who has done wrong to him, wrong to me then I shift to the good things he has done before that. That is shift, that is the first step. And if someone is a, my enemy today, that is, means he was my friend yesterday. So by reflecting like that, going to the positivity. And after that move on, is it? Or? Then the mind, it says. Then the second is, Forgetting and ignoring. Uh, then the third is reflecting on the dangers of having those thoughts. If I carry this angry thought, what am I going to get? Then you get the idea, this is pointless. And it helps you to come back to meditation. <coughs> and also, if you are carried away from the meditation by memories, then you trace back to the, you go and uh, 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 like that, then you go to the origin where you, your mind was hijacked. Because uh, it comes of your memories. Even if you re are reading something, there is one single thought you are carried away to other memories. Then you, in the, in your, from your own mind, you look back and trace where I, you started your f hijacking. There was a monk in the olden days, he goes and comes back and goes again and comes back because he comes to the place where he forgot. Then the other people, this monk is mad or he forgot something. But you can't practice on the road like that. But those days the roads were lonely. So the monk you go in mindfully, when he loses his mindfulness, he comes back and figure out where he drove his and restart. Then if it comes to worst to worst, you have to put up with it. 
this is called clenching your throat and clenching your teeth. <laughs> like that. You have to put up with it. And then there are five ways, yes. There are so many ways. But the, at the beginning, it's always like that. Because we have a lot of memories. It's not easy to uh, erase the memories. Certain memories, easy. But strong memories are, they are registered memories. When you close your eyes, when it is quiet, quiet, nothing to hear, then those inner stuff from the memories, then only you are aware how much you remember things, so the inner storage of memory, they come onto the surface. That is why the mind, we say the mind is wandering. It is not the mind. Now you, you might say, my mind went to America. Your mind did not go to America. The memories you have about America in your own mind, they came to the surface. That is what is happening. Then you have to reflect and learn it. It will come slower and slower. I told my meditation teacher, I have a lot of good memories and it's very... No, 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 no. I had to work for... I took eight years to work out with the memories. So it's a very... Like uh, when you have a big bowl of water, if you put a teaspoon of sugar, it gets dissolved. But a sugar cube will stay for some time. There are very strong memories in the mind, like sugar cubes. Very strong emotions, memories. It will take some time. So aware, now the big ball of water is like the awareness to the present moment. In the awareness to the present moment, your minor worries, minor anxieties, they will get dissolved. But a sugar cube will definitely, if you put the sugar cube in the freezer, even it will take even more time to come back. If you put strong ice, it will take some time to get dissolved. It's like that. Then you have to try those uh, methods and see what works you the best. Now some people get depressed at the beginning of the meditation. Oh, I should have done some painting. I should have done some washing up in the kitchen. <laughs> because so many inner stuff, they keep on coming. So when you go to the meditation, oh, so many, so much. Because we have an unconscious mind. Unconscious mind means you are not unconscious. The inner mind which we are not aware. So you have to bring those up slower and slower. It's like vomiting. So you have to sort out these, re resolve them. And also, if it is a strong memory, one way is to Make a determination, until I finish this meditation, may not this memory disturb my meditation. That is from in upper mind to the inner mind, I, inner mind I told. So you have to resolve. But if you put your car into the motorway, you just see shh, shh, the other going, the vehicles going the other direction. If you keep on driving a little bit, you will slowly see, ah, oh, there were four passengers. Ah, oh, two women and one man or something like that. So, when you start your meditation, you are not aware of your own memories. It will become clearer to you a later, little by little, when you keep on driving for the first five, two kilometers, you will be able to recognize the vehicles going on the other direction. First you have uh, a fish, you are like a fish out of water at the beginning. So like, mm, as an example is because a lot of highways. So when you put your car, you don't know. But slowly, slowly you will pick up, the, recognize the vehicles. How many people were there, who was driving, what color is the car and all that. So, in the middle of the meditation, slower and slower, you will recognize, then you, your mind will learn itself how to drop your thoughts. Yeah. 
But because we have a lot of anxiety, a lot of expectation, if you are in the middle of your meditation, if you think of, I should go to the concentration, your mind is not in the present. Then you are dreaming about where are you going to, where you should go, forgetting what you have to do right now. When you think of your destination in the meditation, you forget what you have to do in the present. So come to the present and you will be there. That there is a natural... Uh, now, where if I have an interview tomorrow, my mind goes to anxiety. What does it mean? The fear of being rejected in the interview. So I have to recognize my fear and then prepare myself to answer the question properly, rightly, yes or no, yes. And sometimes you have to explain. So you have to prepare your, prepare it for the interview rather than dreaming, will I be accepted, will I be what he will love, so it's unnecessary. If you go to a visa interview, then you have to, there are few questions they ask and you have to prepare those questions and answer bravely. One day my, I, uh, I sponsored my brother monk to England. Uh, he didn't, he, could, he was not fluent in, fluent in English, so he got a translator. Then the visa officer asked, you, have, you can't speak English. What are you going to do in England? Yeah. Do all the foreigners who come to Sri Lanka learn Sinhalese first before they come? <laughs> the visa officer burst into laugh. <laughs> and the visa officer gave him his visa. Sometimes the diplomat just said, because now I didn't learn my Mali. English is there. So do all the foreigners who come to Sri Lanka learn Sinhalese first? The visa officer, it was a bit sort of sense of humor. The visa officer laughed, laughed, laughed and gave the, Sometimes it works with different sense of humor. I think I have only five, five minutes more. A short story. Husband and wife, they uh, had an argument the night uh, before they go to bed. They were, they were planning a trip the next morning. Both went to their own rooms, no talk. Next day, husband got up, had a shower, dressed himself, brought the car to the portico. The wife also got up, had a shower, dressed her very beautifully and brought all these food and everything to the, and put them in the boot. They both get into the seats. Now their husband is driving. Both are thinking, this is not there is no meaning, there is no point talking to each other, but nobody starts. All of a sudden, a group of buffaloes were crossing the road. Husband stopped the car and pat the wife and said, your relations. Hus wife was also brilliant. You said, yes, of course, by marriage. They both laughed. They both laughed and started talking, chatting. <laughs> It was the end of the problem. <laughs> Sometimes using the sense of humor, it works out all less and everywhere. Sometimes it can get worse. <laughs> wife was brilliant. Yes, of course, my marriage. Because I married someone like you, a buffalo like you. That is why they are related relations to me. The wife gave a very wise answer. Husband also laughed, laughed, laughed. He understood his stupidity. <laughs> There are things like that in the family life. <laughs> One day my teacher told, mm, okay, this year you should, for the three months retreat, you should go to this place. I said, it's a very cold climate. I might uh, have uh, flame diseases or something like that. The, my teacher says, the, you know, the Buddha had a very hard life for three months. I said, if I have the 
merits equal to the Buddha, I can do anything, but I don't have equal merits of Buddha. My teacher laugh, laugh, laugh. <laughs> you <have> to <laughs> it's like that, you have to give the right answer. But with the respect and gratitude, you just use your sense of humor. If I have the Buddha amount of merits, I can do anything. <laughs> it's like that. So we do the sharing and merits here, I think it's long. <coughs> anyway, <coughs> at this time, you have got a lot of uh, knowledge, also plus blessings. Blessings are, it's a positive energy which help us to have, a, suc have success, prosperity and protection from all around. Opposite of curse. People curse us and let us suffer. People bless us and we are happy. Blessings come from actions done with good intention and with purity of heart. So you have got today. And also blessings are two types. One is individual and collective. Like a fiber, coconut fiber, is an individual choice, an individual blessing. If the, you put the coconut fiber into a particular pattern, and then you get a big rope, like the collective blessings today. May we offer these merits all to all the gods who protect this, uh, your organization and the members, and also who protect your home, property and family, and who protect each and every one of you very personally. May the gods rejoice in your goodness, and may they in turn bring blessings and protection. May the gods set in Nibbana the highest goal, the highest peak of spiritual progress. Ittavata cha amhe hi sambhatam punya sampadam sabme deva anumodantu sabme bhuta anumodantu sabme satta anumodantu sab sampatti siddhya. Let us also share our merits with all our departed relatives who passed away over the years, our ancestors, parents, teachers, elders. Friends and relatives who have passed away, may we offer our blessings in full measure. If they are in places where they can receive our blessings, may they do so. If some of them are born in miserable places, may these merits relieve them from all sufferings and help them to have bitter births. If some of them have untimely deaths, may they never ever experience such deaths. And if they are in happy worlds, May they add more and more blessings to their lives out of this meritorious act. And finally, may they attain the highest eternal and perfect bliss, harmony, peace and comfort. Idam me nyati nang hutu sukita untu nyatayo Idam me nyati nang hutu sukita untu nyatayo Idam me nyati nang hutu sukita untu nyatayo By the power, by the grace, by the Virtues by the blessings of all these good actions, may all of you be blessed with good health, happiness, long life, success, prosperity and protection from all around, protection from ill luck, misfortune, evil planetary forces, undesirable dreams and all kinds of dangers. May you never ever be born in the main four hells. Instead, may you be born in places where you can do more and more merits and get more and more blessings to do your lives. And also may you have good companionship in every kind of human births. And finally, may the merits help you to free yourselves from all kinds of suffering and to attain Nibbana, the highest goal in Buddhism. See sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you very much. Yes. I chant the verses of sharing and aspiration in English. Maybe you can find this chanting in some of the books. Through the goodness that arises from my practice, may my spiritual teachers and guides of great virtue, my mother, my father and my relatives, the sun and the moon, and all virtuous leaders of the world, 
May the highest goods and evil forces, celestial beings, guardian spirits of the earth, and the Lord of death, may those who are friendly, indifferent or hostile, may all beings receive the blessings of my life. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Thank you once again. May all your wishes come true like the moon that comes to its fullness on the full moon day of the month. May oh, you all be well and happy. Thank you very much indeed.